For how long do you wish to live? If you get a chance, will you pick 60, 100 or 200 or maybe forever? Before that, let me ask you an important question. How old are you? What do you mean by that? Is it that you have spent that much time since you were born? Or is that about the biological conditions of your body itself? Well, you may be a little bit confused. Actually, those two are two different concepts. The time you have spent since you were born till now is your chronological age. The age derived based on the genetic and epigenetic conditions of the cells in your body is your biological age. So, what's meant by aging? You may say that it's a passage of time. But aging can also be defined biologically. By slowing down or reversing one's biological age, we can potentially extend his lifespan along with health and youth. In fact, several animals are already doing that. Some animals do regenerate themselves. Some age very slowly. Some do not show any hint of aging at the cellular level. Some even reverse their life cycle and start all over again when they become old and feeble. For example, some jellyfish species such as immortal jellyfish can turn themselves from the medusa stage back to the polyp stage in harsh conditions by a process called transdifferentiation and restart the life cycle. Salamanders including axolotl can regenerate even extreme body parts. Even lobsters can regenerate some body parts. Every day our cells get damaged due to external factors such as solar radiation, chemicals, injuries and diseases as well as various internal factors including genetic alterations and epigenetic changes. So, new cells are produced by existing cells to replace damaged cells through mitosis. Every time cell divides, DNA in the cell condenses into chromosomes. The ends of chromosomes consist of special regions called telomeres which contain DNA that does not contain active genes. They cap the ends of chromosomes as plastic tips of the ends of shoelaces that stop the ends of shoelaces from fraying. Every time cell divides, DNA in the mother cell is replicated but the DNA contained in the telomeres are not completely replicated. So, along with each cell division, the telomeres become shorter and shorter until they are gone. Beyond this point, the cell can no longer divide and the cell begins to age, finally dies or sometimes get transformed into a cancer cell. This is one hypothesis on how our cells undergo aging. The DNA in all the cells in your body are the same. So, why do different parts of your body look so different? And how do cells in different parts of your body know what to become and what to do? The answer is somewhat complicated. The genome, which consists of DNA, is like the hardware, which contains all the information as genes which are required for all body functions. The epigenome is like the software, which holds the instructions on how the genome be expressed under different situations. The epigenome consists of different epigenetic markers which can suppress or enhance the expression of certain genes in a cell, making cells different from one another in different tissues and organs in the body. This is how a muscle cell knows that it needs to be a muscle cell. These epigenetic instructions make sure that the genes need to develop into a muscle cell are turned on, while the instructions specific to other types of cells are turned off. Although the genetic composition in our cells does not change, the epigenetic markers do change, leading to alterations in the epigenome in the cells. Due to changes that occur in the epigenome, the gene expression is altered, potentially changing and compromising the cell functions. This condition leads to cell aging and ultimately causes the whole organism to become aged and feeble. This is another theory that explains the process of aging. Dr. Shinya Yamanaka received a Nobel Prize in 2006 for discovering four transcription factors called Yamanaka factors which have the ability to convert any adult cell back to young stem cell by reversing its biological clock, or in other words, resetting the epigenome of the cell, including the DNA methylation pattern. 
Recently, Dr. David Sinclair published some research carried out regarding the effects of artificially induced demethylization of genes using a combination of three out of four Yamanaka factors. In mammals, the central nervous system is one of the first systems to lose the ability to regenerate, which is lost within days after birth. He observed that when the optic nerves of three to four month old mice were damaged, and the expression of those three factors was induced within the eyes for 12 to 16 weeks, the optic nerve fibers started to regenerate, and the regenerating axon fibers had extended over 5 mm into the chiasm, the region where the optic nerve connects to the brain. Similar results were observed even in 12 month old mice, although the axon generation was slightly weaker in old mice than in young mice. Glaucoma is a leading cause of blindness related with age, caused by the loss of retinal ganglion cells and their accents, often due to increased pressure inside the eye. In one experiment done by Dr. David Sinclair, glaucoma was induced in a group of mice. Then, the expression of those above mentioned three factors was induced within the eye for four weeks. After four weeks, Accent density in the eyes of glaucoma-induced mice was restored to the level of normal eyes, while a rapid increase in number of ganglion cells in the retina was not observed. Furthermore, a significant increase in visual activity was also observed in those mice. The same experiment was done in a group of old mice who had lost their vision due to aging. Compared with the retinal ganglion cells of 5-month-old mice, it was observed that the mRNA levels of 464 genes were altered in old mice during aging. Surprisingly, around 90% of those were restored to the level of youthful mice by the treatment done using the above combination of three Yamanaka factors. The above experiments provide evidence that the expression of those three transcriptional factors in cells restore the epigenome of the aged neurons of the central nervous system without causing cells to lose their identity or undergo pluripotency but causes the neurons to function as they were young again by promoting the youthful epigenetic signature and gene expression pattern. This supports the idea that the changes in DNA methylation patterns play a key role in the process of aging and also its functional reversal. There are some other hypotheses also that describe the aging process. After all, as the above potential aging reversal methods are yet to be developed, we may be able to slow down our natural aging process by consuming healthy diet, engaging regular physical exercises, having sufficient sleep, and altogether maintaining a healthy physical and mental lifestyle. <laughs>